Are you ready to listen to a podcast? podcast. Here comes the Playhouse Podcast. Thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Find, subscribe, and listen. We couldn't be more happy to bring aboard the lovely Psychic Kim, everybody! Hello! Thank you. <laughs> How are we feeling today? <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Good. I uh, had a whole bunch of people already call in wanting to talk to you, and I don't know if it's this time of the year or why, but almost every single person that we have lined up that wants to uh, try and get on with you wants to talk about jobs. Is there something floating around in the atmosphere that we should know about or in the uh, other realm that uh, people are just looking for different jobs? What's or the deal? just coincidence. Uh, well, no, normally when it comes to people tend to be in the same vibration that comes through. So it just happened to be all these people are kind of lining up with each other. So if I say something to one person, it's probably going to coincide with everybody that's listening. Oh. It's kind of interesting how it works yeah. with the uh, spiritual realm. Excited to see how this plays out. So let's get to Amanda, who was first through. Hi, Amanda. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What's your question for Psychic Kim? I know it has to do with your job. <laughs> yeah. So I just recently got a new job, changed fields and everything, um, but I'm just kind of wondering now if I should switch again. I know it sounds kind of funny, but there's been things, so I was just wondering if this was the right path. All right, Kim, what are you thinking? Stay put or stay on the path? Um, she needs to stay put for a little while. You have to give it at least three to four more months before you actually lock in a decision. Um, they said you have too much waxing and waning going on, and there are definitely some um, internal factors that are being created from external factors at the job. They said you need to work through that stuff. Um, they said this is a little bit of fear that you're trying to fight, um, that you don't want to even look at into yourself but um they said before you actually make a true decision on if should i stay or should i go now it should be three to four months so give it a chance okay uh so basically i think what i think what most mostly what you want to do here is amanda is uh is is look at a calendar so four months is you know right around my birthday october 22nd oh god which is my birthday uh you know give it till then maybe and then uh and then make your move is that what you were saying kim basically in in a short story Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Wait till his birthday, and then talk to him about on his birthday and see what happens. It's October twenty second, Amanda. So uh, he'll give you yeah. plenty of a heads up. Good okay. luck and uh, have a great day. Thanks for coming on the show. Oh, I'm sure. I think. Take care. And Lexi's up next. Hi, Lexi. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Yeah. Um. Great. Thanks to ask, uh, for asking. I know. Um. You have a, a job question for Psychic Kim as well. What do you got? Yeah, I'm just uh, recently switching careers. It's a totally new thing, and I'm just looking to see if this is going to be the right thing for me. Is this normal for so many people to question a career move? I mean, how, how long when how yes. long ago did you uh, did you make this move, Lexi? Uh, just a couple months ago, I made the decision, but now I'm just going to be transitioning into it this month. All right, so basically, you're just kind of wondering, is it right for her? Or what do you think, Kim? Kind of same thing. Um, this one actually doesn't feel as strong. Um, I actually feel drained out moving this way. Um, the career field they're showing me is you're on the right track, but the actual company, I, I am questioning. They show me a huge question mark on this one and I feel internally just drained and I feel sucked. I actually feel kind of sick in my stomach. So I think you maybe need to just look at maybe a different company. Um, yeah, different company. But, but the same, same kind of job. Type of field, yes. Okay. That makes That's sense. why you're questioning that. that. I completely understand that. <laughs> All right. I feel that. Well, good. I'm yep. glad you got some vindication out of it. And you, you probably, you know, sometimes you just you kind of feel it and then you just need that little push. So thanks, Lexi. All right, thanks, guys. Take care. Uh, let's do one more this round, and instead of going on the job thing, uh, Taylor, I, I know that you've got a custody hearing on the way, and you're going through a separation. Or Check that. You just have a custody hearing on the way, right, Taylor? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so what's your question then for Psychic Kim? Um, I guess I've just been worried about it. Um, it seems like it's going to be kind of a spiteful situation on the other end, so just wondering how it's going to turn out. 
Uh, I, I'm feeling a lot of tug and pull on this one. Tug and pull, like the, the kids in the middle, and I'm just getting pulled each way, pull back and forth. Um, I keep, <laughs> this is funny, uh, it's like I see a judge, this is how they're showing me, a judge, and the judge is constantly rolling her eyes and like just, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh, cannot believe the stories right. that are coming out. Um, uh, so I feel like I hear it's going to go in more your favor, but it's going to take time. They show me having every single ounce of evidence possible. They show me the text messages, emails, or whatever you have. Um, you yep. have all of that presentable, ready to go. But I do feel like you're going to, if you have a, I don't know if you have a lawyer, if you have somebody like representing you, they're going to be like, I hear the word challenged as to really think outside the box on this one. But okay. it's going to go more in your favor. It's just going to take a little bit of work, they're saying. Okay. Good luck. Taylor, did I just hear like a relief? <sighs> okay, on that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, good. All oh, right. Well, are you keep okay? The Head up, kiddo. Do what's right, okay? Thank you. Oh, I you got this, it. girl. Aww. Why do things always go so well with Psychic Kim and not when I do my readings on Fridays? <laughs> I'm not understanding. Because she doesn't have a set of tarot cards from 1951 <laughs> that she bought at a rummage sale. You're legit, right. girl. So uh, let's do another round. Uh, can, can you hang out for a quick second, Kim? Just more? Yeah. Jenny, good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Appreciate your patience and waiting for Psychic Kim. What would you like to ask about? I know this has to do with this is your job and you have like a separation from your husband going on. Right, yeah. right. So I just started a new job last week after being at my old company for 10 years. Wow. And then we are actually separating on August 1st. I already have a place, and I'm just worried that I'm taking on too much change at once or if this is going to be a good thing. Oh, well, right away, as soon as you start talking, I can feel the emotions just coming out of you. I can feel a lot of grief, sorrow, loss. Like, it is a lot that your body, your energy is definitely going through. So I can understand why you're questioning it, because I can feel all that. Oh, but you have to trust that process. You wouldn't be pushed as hard as you're getting pushed if you couldn't handle it. You need to just make sure you're continuously asking for support, whether that's on the spiritual realm, whether that's on the physical realm. Continuously ask for that support that you need because they're saying you're going to need the support. You cannot do it on your own. Connect with family, friends, um, however you can, um, just to continuously keep your your energy, your mood up because this is a huge push for you, and you are you're meant to go through this. Don't back away. Keep going. So the right moves, you just got to find, uh, yeah. you know, the support system, huh? Yep. Sound good? Jenny helped you hear that? Yeah, uh, it, it helped a lot, and it's funny. I went through cancer and a bunch of surgeries, and then my mom passed away from cancer last year, so it all kind of makes sense. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Keep the faith. Keep yeah. working hard. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you very much. Thanks, Jenny. Appreciate yeah. it. Yep. Uh, Tiffany, how you feeling today? Hi, I'm good. Thanks. Good. Are you? Are you are you're moving? Are you not moving like away from us? Are you? Are you leaving because Cat isn't putting much effort into the show lately? Is that what I heard? <laughs> no. Okay. Right. Um, He's a I liar. Am, <laughs> I am planning actually a pretty big move here, um, out of state, and so. There's obviously, like, a lot of push and pull from different people in my life, and I was just kind of wondering, like, if I'm kind of making the right decision here. Fair enough. <laughs> what do you think, Kim? Um, well, for one, i got to tell you, it's not their decision, and you shouldn't listen to what half these people are saying because I keep hearing it is time to go. It is time for the move. There's more greater things, and it's interesting because I get shown a picture of like a big city like skyscrapers and then i get a picture of out in nature um just fields and grassland um all this it's like there's a contrast they're saying you're going from one area to the next it's a big it is a big shift for you there's a big comparison it's like you're going from the they're going from one aspect of your soul and you're going and you're 
walking into a whole nother aspect of your soul. You're going to be able to see yourself in a whole different manner. They said, this is pulling out this courage inside of you. This is pulling out fear inside of you. Um, I feel like they're showing me putting on my running shoes and like getting going, like not stopping. Uh, the image you show me is Forrest Gump as he's run across the United States. That's the image I get. So this means go forward, do not stop. And it's like they're showing people are asking him, they're talking to him, and he's just like completely ignoring them. He's in his own zone and he's going to go and do what he wants to do. And they're like, that's what you need to do. Don't listen to anybody else. You, you got Beautiful. It. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck, <laughs> Tiff. And remember, uh, if you get outside the broadcast range, it's uh, the app. You got to listen on the app. Download it for free. In your Ab- app store. So we got like four Absolutely. listeners. And if you leave, it's really it's bad luck. <laughs> and download our podcast. We're <laughs> na- nationally <laughs> syndicated. Cast All, right. All right. Thanks. Bye. Radio paparazzi. All right. Kim Kardashian putting on uh, just a nice face for her kids on Father's Day. They had a lovely day with Kanye. It's going good. We had, you know, Father's Day at the house. He, The kids, you know, spent the day with him. And then we had a big Father's Day dinner and North cooked. So, you know, oh, wow. it's, um, <laughs> of course, I wanted to honor and respect the amazing people and fathers, men in, in my life that have raised me and are raising my children children so every everything's going good mm. classic mom there for you just trying to make sure the kids don't see any drama you know that's what you should do i like that tactic uh stick around though because our kids got on instagram live during the next paparazzi and uh she had to threaten to not go to the toy store that oh day. my gosh the kid Leroy, he is talking about how he learned like a crash course in being thrifty as soon as i uh signed a record deal i went i came back here actually and I went to Harold's and bought like three pairs of uh, of Amiri jeans and um, I wore them a couple of times and I was like oh god I can't believe I just paid that much money for those jeans and then uh, started shopping at vintage stores a little crazy you know there was that story about Adele who got the big check from the music label for her first um, uh, song you know where did I give up or should I just keep chasing it? You know that song? Uh, chasing Pavement? No, I can't understand it when you sang it, did but I remember I when she did this it. This one? Right, yeah. just get... Anyway, so she spent all of her money at Burberry. And all of it? She, she didn't have any <laughs> money left. They were like, you spent the entire check. and Somebody who's like, been waiting it out. Of course I did. Uh, Priscilla Presley, she is doing press right now for the new Elvis movie that's coming out on Friday. I'm excited. I, I want to take my dad. I know my mom wants to go. Derek's mom wants to go. But uh, she's talking about just some things that maybe the normal public didn't know about Elvis. That first of all, when he was young, he never liked to go to people's homes or eat because he didn't like eating other with other people's silverware. So he would take his own silverware. And he didn't like drinking out of cups that other people had drank out of, even restaurants or other homes. So when he drank, he would drink where the handle was. So knowing that no one would ever drink at that side. My uncle does that. I wonder if he's got a little bugaboo. There are so many people that are going to find out more about Elvis than they ever knew. And there's a generation, maybe two generations, that don't know enough about the king. Yeah. Blowing out their candles today, we have Donald Faison of Scrubs, who's in a new commercial with uh, Zach Braff. I saw it. And uh, they have not aged at all. 48. Aaron Brockovich is 62. And Cindy Lauper is 69 today. Here we go. Summertime by George is back for year 11. And every year, it just keeps getting better and better. I know that we're out there a couple of times this year. Can't wait for it. The uh, concert series kicks off tonight. And there are going to be two acts presented by RBC Wealth Management. Woo woo. Our wealth uh, management service that we go through. Uh, Cat Blue is going to open at 530. And the Mason Dixon line is going to rock the stage at 630 to 9. And it's not just music. There's a beer garden. There's food. There's stuff for the kids to do. I'm sure the splash paddle beyond. There's so much to do. So head on over to Lake George for all the fun. Minnesota Livestock and Specialty Crop Farmers can now submit applications for drought relief. Each farmer can receive up to $7,500 related to unexpected expenses from the extremely dry conditions between July 19th and January 1st uh, of 2022. A link to the application portal is on our website. Just type in keyword news and it goes right there. According to the CD DC drowning is the second leading cause of death in kids between one and four. You know, I did put on my cat KCLD Facebook page the dry drowning. Have you ever heard of that? No. Where kids, they might take in water uh, in the pool and then it just sits in their lungs. You guys could go to McDonald's after they could watch a movie and then at night... 
the water could really sink into their lungs. Wow. And it's called dry drowning. So it's very scary. Uh, but also... The fact that uh, what they're wearing in the pool could help save their lives. For light-bottomed pools, neon pink and neon orange stood out the most. White and light blue suits stood out the least. For lakes and dark-bottomed pools, neon orange, neon green, and neon yellow are more visible. Neon pink is not visible in a lake setting. In a lake setting at two feet of depth, the visibility of all swimsuits goes down to zero. Jeez. All right, kind of scary, so make sure that you are buying the right colored swimsuit. But it won't matter if a shark bites you and kills you. Uh, it looks like, according to the University of Miami, sharks are getting closer and closer to crowded shorelines and beachgoers than originally thought. That's like a buffet. It is, but they're there because they smell the fish carcasses that have washed up on shore, and so they want to get as close as possible. And then if there's a human leg there, what are you going to do? Dinner. In- just kidding. Just kidding. You're okay. <laughs> you live in Minnesota. <laughs> You're okay. You're fine. <laughs> in uh, sports, they spent too much time covering this squirrel running around on the field. I saw this. This was a Pittsburgh Pirates oh game, and they God. could not catch it. The crew is coming out. I mean, this is just straight out of... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm watching the Benny Hill show right now. Something like that. Things got squirrel in Pittsburgh. <laughs> the guy with the net almost blew an ACL out. Yeah. I mean, when they capture this dude here, yeah. <laughs> just let it play out. The squirrel can't. will leave. You can't. It won't. It's like the cat that gets loose. But how did the cat get in the stadium in the first place? They're you know, just, just feral funny. cats. They're just running around. They were uh, they were eating out of the garbage and they found their way they in. They were man. here first before the stadium. You know what I mean? Let's begin now. Let's get it popping. Welcome in. The th- Wednesday. 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 It is Wednesday. Wednesday. Can Wednesday. you believe yesterday was just Can Tuesday? Can you just believe that it was just <laughs> June? Uh, welcome in. Let's do this thing. It's going to be a fun show today. Hope you can hang for a while. How would you like to win $1,000 cash? One simple text could give you that money. And I'll get you all those details in less than 10 minutes. How was your Tuesday? Uh, my Tuesday was fine. It was busy, but it was good. Lunch with uh, the boys at Jules Bistro, which was delicious. And then Liam and I had to run to Costco. We got his uh, birthday gift, oh. which is a turbo e-bike. Which is kind of cool. It's called the Bolt. Is that is it a, like a looks like a smaller bike with the longer handlebars, or does it look like a regular bike? It looks like a uh, no, not as big as a regular bike. It's smaller, but um, it like you can pedal if you want to. But if you start pedaling, then it gets the engine going, and then you're like zzz, zzz, goes thirty miles yeah, an hour. Right on. I uh, got him that. And then uh, went to Tommy's Car Wash, and I just picked my six winners. So every time I go through the Tommy's Car Wash uh, and do a video on my page, which is going to be once a month, I give away six Tommy's Car Washes in Way Park. So Look go you get making your ride. Friends by giving stuff away. I know. It's the only way. And then uh, we had baseball last night in Sartell. It's a very nice complex. That's Central Park. Was it the, uh, one back by Park. The, uh, the one back by the golf course there? Yeah. Yeah, I like that place. Very nice. Uh, so I uh, played some ball under the sun, and it was a good night. And that's that. How about today? What's the plan? Anything fun? Uh, I don't know what we have today. I I'm going to pick planner. out a brand new KCLD vehicle oh, So today. what are we looking at? Are we looking at something like... Uh, an E. It's to replace. Car? Maybe, maybe, okay. maybe. But uh, I think it. I think the only thing that's holding us up is the fact that some of these batteries only get like a hundred and some miles a, a charge. You know what I mean? And so the hard part would be is like if, let's crazy. let's say if we well I think they're closer to maybe two hundred. But the hard part would be let's say they're not adequately charged here. Yeah. And we've got to go to do an event in Brainerd. Right. And we can't find a charging station along the way, or we, we get just to have to make sure people know to plug it in. Yeah, yeah, but l- l- yeah. So, and I don't know. So we'll, we'll figure something out. But uh, if you've seen over the years, our giant black, we call it the thunder truck. Yeah, that thing is getting retired, and I think that was, I think that originally started here at KCLD in like the late eighties. We have had several offers of people wanting to buy it and change it into a home. You know, like the TikTok trend where yeah. they're like, "We now live out of our our houses, our uh, our van." Now, Here's what so. I can tell you. You've never really driven it. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want you, AC and safety, you probably want to get a different vehicle. The vitality of yeah. your family. This is not the truck for yeah. you. So it's uh, about to be retired. I think we just get a crane and bury it. Yeah. Or drop it Maybe. into the quarry. Real quick, I need you to take off your headphones real quick. All right. 
All right, stand up. I know this is asking a lot, but I need you to stand up. Get away from everything. Put your, oh, you got to take a step back towards the wall a little bit. Put your hands out to your side. I'm not following Just, for this <laughs> just put your hands out to your side. Now, stand on one leg starting now. Go. Good. All right. Okay. Leg back down. You were on one leg the whole time? Yeah, you were looking at I, me. Well, I couldn't see you under the... I was just assuming it. You didn't see these thick thighs. Here's what, you, here's what you want to do, guys. You got to talk to mom and dad and grandma and grandpa and have them do the same thing. Why? This new research says if you can't do this for 10 seconds, if you can't stand on one leg sober, yeah, stand on one leg with your arms out for 10 seconds, you're going to die within the decade. Oh my God! You want me to have my ninety-two-year-old grandmother stand on that on one leg? You don't leg? think she could? No. How about Gramps? Um, probably not. How about mom and dad? No, my mom's knee just got bad. Could she stand on the other leg? Probably not. This is <laughs> concerning, guys. It is very concerning. I've always had amazing balance, though, so I'm not worried about. Now, myself. there's no direct connection between balance and one particular disease, but in general. Those who fail to be able to stand on one leg for 10 seconds without bracing themselves are not in good enough health where they're going to see 10 more years of life. Riddle me this. The people that did this study had people stand on a leg and then they waited 10 years yeah. to see how many people it died. It was a 25-year study. What a waste of time. Most of these people that died were obese, had some kind of heart disease, high blood pressure, High cholesterol, that might have contributed to the higher death rate among those who had bad balance. But you are at least twice as likely to die in the next 10 years if you can't stand with one leg and your arms out for 10 seconds. Back up. Back up. So I can watch. Oh, my God. I've got such good balance. Three, four, five, six. Seven. Are you throwing crap at me? That <laughs> garbage? Ten. Oh, Jeez. there you go. Well, I had to avoid a barrage of <laughs> bottles and cans over here. All right. But I just wanted to, like, I'm, I'm not asking you to go to your, your family picnic this year and have everybody do this. But if you're going to go to a large gathering and you can get everybody to do it, have them just stand there. And those who tip. <laughs> you're going to die. Yeah, you're going to die. Start you're asking die. what their will is looking like and if you got to make a move. That's a very strange study. I hate to be morbid on you, but uh, if, I, if somebody told me, hey, you're going to die within the next year, I would change my lifestyle quite a bit. Oh. I would do different stuff. Like what? What would you do? I won't be Stop doing this eating any dopey uh, show anymore. Strips? No, I need more chicken strips. Uh-huh. I wanted to quickly talk about and start thinking about your earliest job that your parents ever got you because uh, my friend Laura just got her 12-year-old daughter a job. And it's kind of like an under the table job. So uh, one of our friends has a salon and um, she just has gotten so busy, which is a great problem to have. But she just wants to make sure that the salon stays nice and clean. So she has hired this 12 year old girl to come in on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays in the morning early. Like she has to get up maybe at like 7 a.m. The salon opens at 9 and she has to go in, clean up all the hair, wipe down all the surfaces, wipe down all the bottles, like the product, you know, that are on display that might catch hair That's or... Okay. Good job. I think it is a really good job. But what's funny is that she starts uh, on Friday and Laura just told her yesterday, she's like, hey, I got your job. You start on Friday. And I'm like, how old's, oh. the, how old's the daughter? She's 12. Yeah, that's fine. You don't I think to... it's fine, too. And she's going to get paid under the table. Like, here's some extra bucks for cleaning. I didn't say what salon. That's all right. But it's going to be a clean salon. It's a really nice one. Everyone knows it. But um, I started thinking about how my mom completely duped me. And I had a flashback. I said, Lori, you should have at least told her that she's going to have a summer job. And she's like, yeah, but I didn't want to give her any time to think about how to say no or how to complain. She's just going to go in and do it. And once she gets her first, like, load of cash, she's going to be like, oh, nice. Yeah. Um, but I was miserable. My mom, I remember, woke me up the day I started. Woke me up at 6 o'clock and said, get in the car, get your get your uh, work clothes on. Which how old were like, you Shorts and a t-shirt. I was... Probably 12, 13. So you were thinking you were going to sleep. Because I was in summer. middle school. And uh, she goes, 
I go, I go, what's going on? She goes, we're going to Bowers Berry Farm. And I'm like, what? And she goes, I got your job. Nancy Bauer wants you to come work on the Bowers Berry Farm uh, strawberry lot. I said, well, that sounds terrible. And she's like, you have to pick the strawberries so they can put it in the cooler for the people that don't want to pick strawberries. Because who likes to do that? The people that think it's fun, like a fun day activity with their kids, it's it's a lie. That's not fun at all. It's dirty. There's bugs everywhere. You're going to get the puny ones. And so I had to go out there backbreaking work, by the way. But I was told the morning of. So did your parents ever get you a job anywhere? Uh, like just bailing hay. Friend? Just uh, riding beans, bailing hay, stacking bales. Well, that uh, sounds bad, too. But this was, this was my dad's thing. It's like, oh, you're going to go to the farm. You're going to earn your keep. You're going to learn a work ethic and stuff like that. I'm like, Dad, all the rest of my friends are going to the pool. But you're not. And uh, and I remember him dropping me off. The, my favorite, I had one guy that I really liked working for. is My dad's high school friend. His name was Mike Morrison because uh, he had a hair lip. Okay. And he, he embraced it, and he would tell the greatest jokes. All right. And it was... It was just so fun. I mean, because he, he would be inappropriate with a 12-year-old with dirty jokes. Yeah. And I loved it. But he was the best part. We'd work hard all day. I mean, he's stacking bears or whatever you're doing. But then my dad would uh, come back and he'd pick me up after he got off work. So it'd be like 5, 5.30 by the time he got to the farm. Yeah. But we would have dinner at like 4.30 or 4.45. And that was always kind of what we had to work towards. And it would be the biggest spread of corn on the cob, hot dogs, hamburgers, watermelon, potato salad, Ooh, cucumber salad. Keep going. Yeah. I mean, it would be it, like you would get fed and it was like, a, it was always lunch on the run, a sandwich and, uh, you know, and a, whatever, and a glass of lemonade or something, right? Because yeah. you, you didn't really fuel throughout the day, but you would sit down to this just, and it would be outside picnic table, red and white tablecloth, like you would imagine like a typical farm would be. Yeah. And it would be the biggest spread. And I remember just raw, 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 like eating like a famished human being. And then my dad would roll up and he'd be like, all right, you ready to go home? Yeah. Gary, sit down. Have some meal. I, I'm like, no. We're he ready. Did. I go, he did not put in the work. <laughs> and my dad just, I remember the time he looked at me and he goes, you don't think I've put in the work. Ooh. And I went, have a seat. Good to eat with you. Let's break some bread. Yeah. But I always got volunteered for those jobs. And it would be all the time during the summer, they wake up at 5 a.m. Hey, somebody needs you to work on their farm. And yeah. I'd be like, you're killing me, Dad. I was going to go to the pool with my friends today. So what was the job your parents volunteered you for? Did they ever just put you in a gig? Talking about National Kissing Day, because uh, we are going to flash back to your very first kiss and where it was. So just the first name of who it was with and where it was in just one word. So I feel like I know the word Allie. Right? Allie. You're in the well, alley. See, now, but that wasn't my first kiss. That was the first, like, time somebody really... Manhandled you. Yeah, like okay. I was... Like, she slammed me against the wall. Yeah. Like, I love that story. Like her womanly urges were flowing. Just thinking what your eyes looked like yeah. through your Coke I bottle glasses. Scared, and was like, Because <laughs> she was a woman at that point. Like, Dang. developed early. Oh, okay. And I was scared. But I think my first, uh, her name was Sherry. And it was Hallway. Sure. Of Bell Plain Elementary so School. So, Sherry Hallway. Yeah, Sherry Hallway. Mine would be John trampoline. Mm. They used to call it a jumpoline. Uh, okay. The cat's mom, mom got died. on it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was um, a romantic night. Maeve Oak had like a house party. Her parents oh, were away. Yeah. And she had a trampoline and there were some spider webs and stuff. But you just forget about it when you're with your love. Mm. And uh, we laid there and I did like one of those really tight, closed lips, you know, because it was my first kiss. I had no idea what was going on. And then it was just a quick peck. Didn't even make out. Nothing. Kiss. All right. So first name of who your first kiss was with. And then one word to describe where it was. And we'll read some of these back in just a minute. Do you think a lot of the sailors will be texting in your name and where it was? Or or they could be listening via the app. Go ahead and text that now because that is what's trending. I wanted to ask the question today. After Kat had kind of rehashed my memory that she once entered a contest as a Cabbage Patch doll lookalike person. And I won. I was adorable. Do you remember what the the name of your doll was? Could I look it up? No, I don't remember the name of the doll. Um, I don't think I ever gave the doll a name. Did you, uh, you willfully enter this or did mom push you in as like a, 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 a pageant mom? Uh, my mom... 
signed me up. Yeah. I was three. So I can't oh, you were only three years old? Up. What, three years old. How old did you think I was? I you were like nine. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> um, no, but my grandfather is currently looking for the photo, so stand by. But it's very cute. I don't think I've entered a competition since I was probably like nine or ten. Yeah. Have you entered an adult competition? No. Anything? We have a, a had a coworker whose wife, uh, it, uh, ex-wife, now has all of those um, bodybuilding competitions where Fitness she's like stuff. She, not an ounce of fat on her body. And then they have to paint the tan on her, you know, and then she stands like with her butt pushed out to the crowd. That's wild. Tony had texted in a couple of seconds ago when we mentioned this that he was in a Meet Mr. T competition from the back of a cereal box. Okay. He entered and won and got to meet Mr. T. That's kind of cool. So what he had to do is he had to enter and then mom had to send in a picture of how he looked like Mr. T with the gold chains and the mohawk and stuff like that. Mr. T. And he got to meet Mr. T. Oh, that's cool. I thought I'd open this up. This can be a fun conversation. Will you call us real quick? With the last competition you entered. Now, it could be like a picture competition. Maybe it was our Father's Day competition, right, where we got pictures of dads and stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm looking for the really unique ones. What if, like, like a hot dog eating contest? Yeah. That would be a competition. That's a competition. Uh, we had, um, boy, at a radio station I worked at, We <laughs> this is so crazy. We had a, a, a hot dog eating competition because that's when it was so big. It, it, it hit this peak with the Nathan's one. Yeah. Right? When, um... When Kobayashi was doing it and stuff like that. And then the, uh, what was the Jaws? What's his name? Joey Chestnut. Yep. Yeah, right. And we so we did our own at the radio station I was at at the time. And I think it was Wienerfest 2004. We called it Wienerfest. <laughs> and we even had a jingle. Uh, one I think of the, I've been to that before. An acapella. <laughs> An acapella group sang this jingle for it. It was Wienerfest 2004. And they it was really they had to pre produce and stuff. Oh so gosh. every time we, it was great. And we had uh, like a dozen of our listeners see who could eat the most hot dogs. And I remember it was like the year that Kobayashi had he'd eaten like whatever, 50. Yeah. And I think the best one of our listeners did was like seven. Oh. <laughs> like it was just paled in comparison to that. So what is the last contest? Contest you entered. Will you tell us real quick? Seemed like we were just sharing a hookah with Chelsea in Mexico. Yes. Those were the <laughs> Probably days. shouldn't have <laughs> shared. They did give us like different uh, interchangeable tips. Mouthpieces. But then you get you so drunk. They would, you forget. But... Yeah. Uh, now, uh, I hope that you guys uh, got the note that, uh, and th- this is kind of weird that we're going to talk about this in front of everybody else. I feel like you're the parents. We're the parents talking in front of the kids. But we have dates and uh, everything set for Party Plan to Paradise 2023. Uh, you got the information at least, right? Yes, okay. I did. Very good. So at least uh, that's the goal. Uh, so everybody that goes with us in previous years gets a chance to rebook with us for 2023. Guys, Kat and I will break down all the information and how you can join us in Mexico in 2023 Monday morning here in the Playhouse. What's that grin about, Kat? Nothing. What is it? No, nothing. Okay, so Chelsea, we were talking about uh, competitions you've entered. Kat was, uh, she entered a Cabbage Patch lookalike competition. I totally forgot about the bikini contest that I entered when I was... 18. Ooh. Where? Uh, at Tropics. <laughs> oh. I, I'm surprised I didn't catch anything. I used but, to host a lot of events there. Yeah. That and... Like, um, I can't even imagine. I'm squirming right now even thinking that I did that. I can't even imagine. Did you do it with a bunch like. of your friends or by yourself? No, there was a big group of girls. And what, what was the prize? You have to walk across. You got a free <laughs> a bar tab <laughs> and then you got like free drinks for a month or something like that. But that means you have to keep going back to and Tropics. How did you write? <laughs> I really didn't want to do that. How did you finish? What? What did you finish? Like, I mean, like, I think what I place? finished in the top four. Yeah. Um, but it was totally rigged. Oh, I'm sure it was. <laughs> Chelsea, what was the contest that you entered? Well, I was actually Little Miss Dairy Queen. I think I was between five or six years old. So Because oh you looked God. like a dilly bar, oh, yeah. you had like a really big head? No, oh. I mean, you would think it was something like that, but I guess they just asked a bunch of questions. And I remember my mom thinking that I probably, you know, wouldn't make it just by probably how I answered. And here I won. So we were very surprised. Do you have pictures? Can you can you yeah. text us sometime? Even, oh, yeah, I do have pictures. I have a little video, too. What did oh. you win as Little Miss Dairy Queen other than, you know, fame um, that would get into your adult life and on the radio? 
Yeah, like every time you went there, they pretty much knew that you were Little Miss Dairy Queen. So that was, <laughs> was, nice. this, was this just Little Miss Dairy Queen for the city you grew up in, or was this like the whole Midwest? Yeah. No, it was in Paynesville. Okay. So you were Little Miss Dairy Queen in Paynesville. So cute. Yep. I want to be a Little Miss something. Can I be like a Little Miss Mexican Village? or a Little Miss, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Little Miss Mexico. <laughs> little Miss Raising Canes. <laughs> <laughs> So weird. Weird stuff. Everybody called me weird. I am weird. You don't think this is a little weird? No, I don't think it's weird at all. Weird news. The heat is officially off you, sir, for mowing your lawn while somebody next door had their graduation party, which was such a big deal. Now so we many have, people ask me about this at my daughter's graduation. I, I think we found what could be worse. This clip going viral on TikTok of an outdoor wedding being ruined by, they're calling her a Karen neighbor that decided to mow and weed whack during the ceremony. Your loving and faithful husband in plenty and in love. <laughs> so How horrible is that? The video is even worse. She, she is she not, doing it on purpose? She couldn't care less. It was just like... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry you had your wedding on the day I need to weed whack. That is how it looks, but that is what's weird. Radio paparazzi. Kim Kardashian had to scold her kids when they went IG Live in NYC. This is called Instagram Live. Hi, weirdos. Hey, stop it. <laughs> Hi, vloggers. If kids. you're watching this, I hate you. Hey, Saint. I'm watching hey, it. Hey, hey, look what you're teaching them. I'm you're good, hey, good. Hey, hey, hey. This hey. is a good one. We are in, pulling in the parking lot. In New York. In New York. We've been sitting here. Look at that toy store. That's something you're not going to see because you are saying bad things. (laughs) No, I want to give them Pokemon. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I would just lose my mind. She's outnumbered. That made me so happy to hear that other people that she's dealing with that. have to deal with that same crap. Yeah. She's also playing matchmaker at the same time. Rumor is Khloe Kardashian seeing a private equity investor. It's very early stages, they but say. She only dated ballers. But Kim, no, it's time to branch out. If you keep going to the same dumpster and the athletes keep doing you wrong. She dated all the Lakers. Is that why? No, (laughs) that's not why. All right. So Kristen Bell, she was on The View and she's talking about how Dax Shepard, he does all this like manual labor around the house. It just makes her so hot. This was Memorial Day weekend. And I'm going to tell you, he pulled out that power washer and he could not stop. (laughs) He power washed everything. And at some point I could see him kind of like looking over his shoulder at me to notice (laughs) if he was doing all the chores and was sweaty. And I was just like, I'm. Picking up what you're putting down, buddy. Does he, does he know? I got it. Does he know what it does to you? Of oh, course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> they always know. All right, so a jury ruled against Bill Cosby in a civil suit based on a sexual assault claim brought by victim Judy Huth, who was 16 at the time that she sh- says she was sexually assaulted at the Playboy Mansion in 75 by him. It's been torture. It has. Just to be ripped apart, you know, thrown under the bus, backed over. And this, to me, is such a big victory. It really is to all victims. Yeah, it is the uh, job of Bill's lawyer to rip the victim apart and show 16. Why were you at the Playboy Mansion? That doesn't seem very responsible. That still uh, doesn't mean. Absolutely not. Blowing out their candles today. Speaking of lawyers, Aaron Brockovich, 62. Cindy Lopper is 69. And Meryl Streep is 73 today. Uh, hearing about Jack White saying that he went on like a five day no eating binge situation um, because he wanted to see where his mind would go when he went to write his last two albums. And he said it started off optimistic. And then you almost see that, excuse me, roller coaster of that into anger because he was so hungry. So hangriness into sadness, into delusion. And there are a lot of cultures that uh, use fasting as a way to clear the mind and to emphasize the soul when it comes to whether it's prayer, whether it's kind of communing with the gods, whether it's uh, just uh, being able to prophesy and stuff like that. So this is this is something that humans have known about for thousands of years is that if you deprive yourself of food or nourishment, your body acts in a different way and you kind of get into a different mind state. So I like the fact that Jack White's like, all right, 
I want to write and I want to write differently. So let me Try starve myself new. for a little while. That's kind of a cool way to do it. The only time I ever went on a fast was for like two days. And the fast was you go on two days of nothing but cranberry concentrate, which has no sugar in it. It's just the tart cranberry concentrate. And then you mix that with water and you drink like two gallons of it throughout the day. And um, then you write little notes every uh, couple of inches. You can do it. It's the afternoon. Keep chugging, girl. You got this. It's nighttime. Finish up. And so I did that for a couple of days. And then you could work in that throughout the day and then a chicken breast and like broccoli at night. And then you do that for four days. And that's not, I fa- did- that's not a fast then. <laughs> no, it was for two days. And then you work in the food. I'm just saying this is what the program was. And I felt amazing. My stomach was flat. It was like, I should try that again. But I felt like my brain was fuzzy, you know, like after the second day. Towards See, and the I, end, feel, I, was like, oh. I feel clear. Like when we're doing our show, uh, I'm in a fast always because I'll have my last meal at like six or seven, my last calorie at like six or seven at night. Yeah. And then I don't eat again till lunch the next day. So I always, if I was to eat breakfast and then come in and try and do the show, I'd be a mess. You would? I would be Even if it was just like a protein bar or something? Complete mess. Well, then don't My body's do just not used to it. And, and, and here's how I know is sometimes on the weekends, I'll make, if I'm home, you know, right, I'll make the kids breakfast. Yeah. And even if I have like a pancake on the side, you know, like while I'm cooking them for them, like I'm, I'm fuzzy mm-hmm. until I get in the afternoon. Something happens where my body is so used to not having nourishment and working off of, yeah. you know, uh, pre-processed energy that I, I, so I think the longest I've ever gone, I've done like three days where I haven't had food. And then I got to the point where it was all I thought about, so it was counterproductive. Yeah. But I, I've, I've done that. I like depriving myself uh, of, of stuff. And if I'm really busy, getting into a day or two where I don't eat isn't difficult, but then it starts being all you think about. And then the other thing is, like, if you go a day and a half and don't have any calories, that next workout is really hard. Yeah. Because all you think about is getting through the workout and eating, like, a giant bowl of spaghetti. And then you're like, no, how much longer can I go? How much longer can okay, I now go? I want how much longer can I go? And I remember getting to the 72-hour mark and then going, this is stupid. What yeah. are you doing anymore? You're dumb. Let's steer away from any, obviously, um, uh, eating disorder conversations. But, like, how long have you gone without eating? So That's I'll set question. the bar. I think 72 hours is good. 72? Yeah, I went 72. Right. And I, I remember I'd love I had, for Tiffany to call in because that, that's a crazy story. I had the app. It was a, a fasting app, and I remember starting it, mm-hmm. and then I could, I'm could. i standing there over a bowl of cereal waiting for it to click from 71 hours and 58 minutes. It sounds like torture. Hours. It was it was horrible. My mind was a freak-out situation. Mm-hmm. But how long have you gone without actually putting calories in your body? Jack White. How long did he go without food? Five days. Five days without food. But he said he food. has never written better songs, and I guess we'll hear on his last two albums. So Clarity. Is what I can offer you if your body is not. I mean, there's probably a certain amount. I mean, this is like if you get scientific, you think there's a certain amount of your brain process that is used for digestion and transferring calories to energy. If you take that out of the rhythm and all your brain is doing is, you know, working your vital organs and thinking. There's probably something there. Make you feel insane. I know a lot of cultures have done this over years and years and years where fasting offers you clarity, whether it's in prayer or whether it's uh, to try and commune with the gods and stuff like that. So it's not unheard of, but the longest you think you've gone without a calorie. Uh, I'm going to say 48 hours. But you're saying I took in calories with the cranberry concentrate. Yeah, I so. think that's like uh, like if if you if people are going to get really picky, they would say that there's that that's not fasting because you're actually taking in some calories. You did 72 hours. I did 72 just to see if I could. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm trying to think. Could I do more? Please don't. Can Unless you, we take a week off. Uh, how don't. long? How long can a human go without food? Isn't it seven days? Because don't they say on Naked and Afraid, you know, like as long as you're not moving and burning those calories, you can go seven days without food, but like, three days without water. Let's just water. say our regular stuff, like like our, on a regular day, could, I wonder how much you could go into work, help raise your kids, take care of your family. Probably not long. It's a lot of energy exerted. I would never, ever recommend it. Uh, Jessica, tell us about your story. I know this was a long time ago, but what happened? This was the result of a spiritual retreat that my girlfriend convinced me to uh, attend with her in Kentucky. Okay. And um, honestly, it, it was pretty extreme. They had us 
Well, we were allowed to drink, but that was all. Like, we couldn't eat for the entire seven-day retreat. Whoa. So you're calling this a retreat. It sounds like a bit more to it. Like, it, I, I feel like a retreat wouldn't do that to your body. Well, they called it like a plant medicine fast where they wanted you to, like, cleanse your body of all these toxins. Okay. We replenished it with plant medicine, and they were trying to, like, teach Dude. It was bizarre. Yeah. I mean, these they, they 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 weren't from America. They had come in, and I think they opened this retreat thing in, in Kentucky from another I don't know island or something. Yeah, but it was there was chanting involved and all sorts of spiritual mantras. Well, what happened to your body? Anything freaky happened to your body at all? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was the lack of food or the stuff the plants they were giving me, but. Me and my girlfriend, we were literally hallucinating. No. Um, I, I remember at one point looking up and seeing this, like, wedding-type gazebo with um, helium balloons. But the helium balloons were for a bar mitzvah. Yeah. And I'm like, this is not a bar mitzvah. <laughs> this is a wedding. Oh, and my And I'm like, God. Oh, wait a minute. We're not... Then I'm like realizing wait, wait, we're not a wedding either. We're we're at a spiritual retreat in Kentucky. Yeah. So yeah. All right. So don't ever do that again. Okay. Can you promise us that? Nobody should go without food for I, I, no more than a day at the most. I mean, this I, I experienced it and it was very uncomfortable. I, uh, and uh, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. I draw the line at spiritual retreat in Kentucky. So Elon Musk's child is now seeking a name change. Not just a name change, but doesn't want anything to do with him. What do you think happened there? Again. I don't know what happened there. Uh, he has several children. A lot of people think that he just has kids with um, his last baby mama, which is not true. Uh, he has had uh, a couple of ex-wives and they've had kids. He has twins and and this one is his transgender daughter. Um, she has now gone to court, and she wants to change her name from Xavier uh, to something else. So, like a total emancipation thing. Um, a total emancipation. Just wants to be uh, associated with the mom and never again, Elon. And so, I was thinking, what leads to that point? I don't know if we'll ever know. Um, just says I don't ever want anything to do with my biological father in any way, shape, or form. So. That means money. Is he the that richest means- man on the planet right now? I'm not sure. There's always that battle between him and Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos. Some sultan. And yep. Bill, yeah, yeah, Bezos, I think, had it in the bag until yeah. he got the divorce. Right. And then he, he, got, he got dropped a couple hundred spots. So I want to know, has anybody had to deal with a situation that is so um, tragic, like having to completely disown a child or a parent my mom did um with with my grandfather he was yeah. very abusive and and it, it was weird because it wasn't a total thing like i think i think she still wanted us as kids to have a little bit of a grandfather thing yeah but then when we were old enough to understand how abusive he was to my grandmother i just remember being like at his funeral and uh and all the grandchildren were given flowers to put on his grave. Mm-hmm. And I just gave one to one of my cousins. Yeah. I was like, I, can't, I was old enough and I was like 12. I was old enough to know like how evil this man had been. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I can't do it. I can't, I can't feel bad or feel any sorrow for a guy that, that beat on his wife and kids for years and years and years. Yeah. Maybe it was for your own mental health or you had to look out for everyone else in your family, but you had to either disown a parent or you had to disown your own child. I can't oh. imagine. But- you ever had to cut anybody out of your life completely like a relative? No, I haven't. And uh, I'm glad that I haven't. I just sometimes choose to not like associate myself with them because if they bring you nothing but drama, I know that they're family and some people might say you have to talk to them because they're family. That's not true. Uh, Jenna had um, kind of set the record straight on this story about Elon said that Elon had made some nasty comments or said things about the trans community, which this child is trans. So, I mean, that would make sense if your father isn't going to accept who you are. I could see that that would be something for you to just move on with Um, this text from 7186. When I turned 18, I went to court to legally change my last name to my mother. 
mother's maiden name. Uh, I did this because my biological father, who I haven't seen since I was five, was abusive in every form of the term. That's a good idea. I so, like that. Every time you say your last name now, you're not thinking about him. Yeah. There, there is some, some mental hang up with that, I'm sure. Hey, Carrie, I appreciate your patience. I know you wanted to tell us about this with, uh, with your son. What's going on here? Unfortunately, um, it's been seven years. We had to cut off our, our son. I mean, he was stealing from us. He took his sister's car, her brand new car, and drove it off the bridge. Oh, oh my God. Crashed. So is this drug fueled or like what was his situation? Drugs and um, and there are some mental health issues that he is not. I mean, he he's a genius, but doesn't yeah. want to deal with his mental health issues. You yeah. know, and so we just had we had to cut him off. Some people don't realize how how strong the brain is, man. It can control everything. It can ruin everything. Did you say this was seven years ago? Yes. Do you know where he is right now? I mean, like, if you had to go find him, could you find him? I I mean, yeah, I have his address, but we had had to cut. We had to get a a court order, basically. Yeah. Because physically, we couldn't trust him on doing things, you know? So Got to break your heart. I, I know where he's at. He's safe. He's safe. I know that. Um, it hurts my heart to, to be a mother and have to cut off your child, but we had to do it for our own safety as well. I can't imagine, like, just sitting there wondering what they're up to. Are they okay? I actually knew somebody at our old neighborhood where we used to live, and uh, the woman that was living across the street, she's like, oh, yeah, my 17-year-old son probably sleeping on a bench somewhere, but, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm like... I would not be able to sleep. I would be sick. But I think to protect your own, the rest of your family, you had to do it, right? Yeah, that was the reason. That was the only reason. Because my husband and I, I mean, we almost got a divorce because of it. Yeah, that was going to be my follow-up. And I I appreciate your story. It was like, this has got to be just a killer on a relationship. I can't imagine how just sleeping at night would go. But if you have other people to worry about, you know, sometimes you have to choose different priorities. Family member. And for some reason, you had to cut them completely out of your life. What's your story? So I just want to spend just a couple more seconds on this. We were talking about Elon Musk, and he has... Well, so this is his daughter who's trans, right? And she now has disowned him. Like, she wants to be... She wants no last name Only linked to the mom and does not want any association with Elon whatsoever. And the more so, we're digging into this, we're finding out that uh, in the past he's made some, some off-color... Yeah. yeah, some off-color remarks about the trans community. And so... I, I get that, and obviously you have your, your own. You're your own person, and you want to represent yourself. So if your dad's making comments that don't necessarily support your lifestyle, yeah. I can get that. So Jeff had texted, "Cut my mom's side out of my life. They wouldn't visit her on her deathbed, so I haven't talked to any of them for five years." If somebody is terrible to your mom or dad, you know what side to take, especially if and it's, it's at okay the end of their side. life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like as human beings. That's usually the time that we're like, oh, crap, I have to make amends. If they're not willing to take that step, then yeah, man, you don't need it. Life's too short. Terry had said, an uncle tried to touch my sister. Um, yeah, yeah, I would uh, definitely try to cut ties there, but I would probably do a little something, I tell something before you, I left. I, 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 the older I get, the more I realize violence isn't the answer. But in that situation, I, I'll go to jail for that. I uh, kind of agree with you on that. And then uh, dad, sister, brothers, drugs, alcohol. Uh, didn't even have any other words in between those, but you don't need anything else to explain it. Natasha says, uh, oh, yeah, lots of people. Uh, you don't support me? Bye. I cut my biological father out. Uh, he will never meet my child or my husband. At, so, first, at first when I read that, I was like, oh, that's pretty sad. And then I'm like, no, it's not. It, your husband and your children do not need to be around horrible people. And it doesn't matter whether or not yeah. that person is a blood relative of you. If they're not good humans, cut them out. Find good people to get in your life. Yeah. Uh, but also remember, if somebody does something bad, know that people can change. But if they keep doing it, it's a pattern. It's going to disrupt your life. I agree with that. And you got to give them a chance to yeah. show that they've changed, though. But yeah, you're right. I mean, fool me twice. That's it. Fool a can't get fooled again. <laughs> Now that we're officially into summer, my biggest question for you, Kat, is the longer I've known you, Mm -hmm. the more I've gotten to spend time with you inside this comfortable 68 degree cooled studio every morning. I realize that this is a comfort zone for you. And sometimes the bane of your existence is when you have to voyage outside into the hot, sticky, icky weather. Correct. That noontime sun beating down on your pale white flesh. I was not nice on Monday. 
<laughs> it was too hot. I was just like, this is miserable. What is the number one thing you... And I love summer, guys. I am a, I'm a baseball guy. I love summer. I, I love the first couple of weeks of summer and where my eyebrows bleach out and they yeah. disappear. <laughs> and I love feeling that I don't care how hot it is. I don't care how humid it is. I will never complain about that because I hate the cold. And you're like, we could live in Minnesota. I know. I hate it. I won't die here. You got me for like a couple more years. When retirement hits, peace. I mean, deuces, I'm Midwest. I'm totally the opposite. I love fall. I love that crisp weather. I don't mind it. Winter did get a little long this year. Every like, year. Wait till you're my age. The gray got a little long this it year. It felt like seven years of winter. But what is the thing you hate most about summer? Now that we're officially here, I'm going to give you one chance to complain about it. Okay. And then we have to be nice all the rest of the summer. What's the one thing you hate most about summer? Uh, I'm just going to say probably the mosquitoes. Like, I just hate them. It's number two on the worldwide list. Absolutely hate them. They're they're horrible. They could ruin an evening. Those poor kids that are allergic and they get like just a little bite right on their cheek and their whole face blows up. Most people say it's just feeling sweaty or uh, or <laughs> the, the worst is if you have to go somewhere nice, like yeah. you have a, a graduation to go to, you got a wedding to go to, you dress nice and there's a part like right before you get back into the air conditioning where you get a little pity, you get a little sweaty, and now you're sitting in your own sweat waiting for a nice event to happen. The worst is just feeling that one drop go right down your back and then pool right above your butt crack. For it's me, it's bad. the dehydration. Well, drink is, water well, then. That's I, totally I feel, preventable. I know, but I feel like I can't get enough water sometimes. Like, I'll, I'll pound water, a gallon after gallon after water. If you're at that point, you're already dehydrated. Yeah, no, I know. And then, uh, but it's my calves get so dehydrated. Like, I'll cramp my cramps. I've never heard that <laughs> yeah, in my I do. life. I, like, you're... yesterday I left work, and I'm walking to my truck, and I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, I almost got a, a cramp in my in my calf because of that. So, Derek will get one right here on the side of his stomach, like, if he goes to reach for something, <laughs> and then he's like, ah! Oh, God. <laughs> and he's, like, stuck like that forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's stuck like that long enough for me to get my phone and videotape, which is <laughs> amazing. The Playhouse podcast is made possible thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Catch the live show weekdays from 530 to 9 on 1047 KCLD. Now, share this with a friend.